What's up y'all, Coach Reese here. I had a video suggestion from one of my subscribers and they asked, how can I get stronger from home for boxing or is there a way to get stronger from home for boxing? And the answer is absolutely. So this video, I'm gonna go into some exercises and principles and explain a few things as far as getting stronger for boxing from home. You could definitely do it if you don't have the luxury of getting to the gym, if you don't have the time to get to the gym. You know, hopefully you've got access to a few little dumbbells around the house or whatnot, but even without, you can still get stronger in boxing from home. Let's get into that thing right now. So when it comes to strength training for boxing, we've already covered back in the other videos that boxing comes out of what? The ground. So the first chain of muscles that we need to strengthen is the legs. After we strengthen the legs, we have to strengthen the core, but in a rotary plane because you twist to discharge in boxing. And then afterwards, the discharge comes through the arms. So we want to make sure that we strengthen the kinetic chain starting from the ground, through the legs, through the hips, and then discharging through the arms. So we're gonna work a lot of legs, we're gonna work a lot of core, and have some explosion coming through the arms. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're gonna work on our list is our calves. It's the first muscle responding out the ground, right? So calf raises. So what I'm gonna do, I have an elevated platform right here, probably three inches off the ground or whatnot. I'm gonna do calf raises. Now keep in mind that calf raises or calves period are a high endurance type of muscle. You can get strength in them. However, you have to do a lot of reps to actually get the strength into them. So what you're gonna do is actually do single leg calf raises. You know, you're gonna, when you punch, you know that you discharge out of one arm at a time. So doing them both at the same time would not be as efficient as doing them separately. So I'll get up here and probably do about 15 to 20 calf raises. Single leg, I'm using my hands for balance. Eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then instantly switch. Two, three, four, five. Let it burn. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Bam. 15 to 20 or wherever you feel the burn. If you're stronger, if you've got more endurance in your legs, go ahead and do more. Go ahead and push yourself. I would suggest three sets of those. Make sure you hit those calves. Don't neglect them. Look at Manny Pacquiao's calves. Big calves, big knockout fighter. So train those calves. When it comes to training your quads and your legs, there are a few different squat variations that I actually implore you to do. I'll explain why as I do them, but you can definitely do jump squats. Jump squats are real simple, just a small jump into your squat. Now, while you're jumping, you're actually training your white fast twitch muscle fibers, which respond fast for speed and power. It's those explosive twitch situations that you want to make sure that you're able to propel out through. So make sure you hit your jump squats. So I aim for a hundred a day. I can break those down into five sets of 24 by 25. I might do 30, 30, 30, 10, but make sure you get those jump squats in, leave the ground. I'm not trying to jump through the ceiling. I'm just leaving the ground. Nice little propulsion right there. Jump squats are definitely beneficial to produce power coming out of that ground after you've got your calves, right? So we're working up the chain, right? Stay tuned. The next thing on my list would be modified pistol squats. Now, we all know what pistol squats are, right? The one-legged squat as to where people with shorter femurs can actually make their way down to the ground. It's harder for us with longer femurs to do it. I'm 44 years old. You're not gonna see me trying to do that anytime soon, maybe possibly ever. Now, let me never say never. However, what I'm gonna use is this box right here. So I'll be doing a modified version of a pistol squat. So what I'll do is balance myself on my right leg, and as I go down, I'll be shooting my left leg forward a bit more and throwing my arms forward to create a counterbalance. Remember, you only punch out of one side at a time. So that's why we're starting to specialize more working one leg at a time versus working them together. So here we go. What I'll do is I'll throw back my hips, touch the box, 
pull myself back up. Remember, you can use a chair, whatever you've got around there that'll allow you to get down to this balance right here and show control. Boom. You're going to have one leg that's stronger than the other. You're going to have one leg that has a little bit more balance than the other and a little bit more stability. However, keep working through it. One side is always going to be stronger than the other. So my bad side, right? Boom. See how long it took for me to get up. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. Five. Those are pretty tough. Keep your rep range low. As you notice, I'm only doing five. So what I'll do is maybe five sets of five. Make sure that you're finding your balance. Make sure you're not putting the weight over your toes and that you're shooting your hips backwards and pulling yourself back forward to make sure that you get full um, extension on the exercise. You hear me breathing right now. <laughs> Those are no jokes. So realistic video, no cuts. Pistol squats, modified pistol squats. Let's move on. Next on the list will be the Bulgarian split squat. Two ways I'm going to do this. Both are going to be tough. So the Bulgarian split squat is when one of your legs are out front, the other is back and balanced, probably on that same platform that you used for your uh, pistol squats. And once again, we're working single leg, right? I'm sure you've seen these on TV or on YouTube or whatever. But you're down and you're up, right? Bulgarian split squats. Four, five, six. I'm only going to do six for now because I'm going to show you a variation. Because right now what we're doing is standard Bulgarian split squats. The change up will change up in just a minute. And <laughs> sometimes, as you see, you might miss the platform that you've got it on. Hit your five. Make sure you hit the same amount each leg. Control it. Boom. Boom. Now, if you want to start adding power and propulsion from it, so that's strength. If you want to start adding power and propulsion with it, what you want to do is do a plyometric jumping Bulgarian split squat. Remember, anything jumping is training what? The fast white twitch muscle fibers. So you want to have speed. Speed is a, how can I say, a proponent of power. You know, you can be strong, but if you can't release something fast, then it's not going to hit as hard. Think about a Mack truck coming at you at 5 miles an hour versus a Mack truck coming at you at 55 miles an hour. Which one's going to hit the hardest? So, in order to turn that into an explosive movement, you add a small hop to your Bulgarian split squat. So you're here. You're here. Adding a jump to any of your leg exercises and even your push-up exercises, which we'll get to later, adds that white fast twitch muscle fiber firing, boom, for strength and explosiveness. So Bulgarian split squats. Use them. Yep, I just started the video in the position already. Wall sits, definitely a good strength builder and actually an endurance builder for your strength in your legs. This right here is torture. I decided to shoot the whole video sitting over here. My legs are already burning, especially with the workout that I've done before I shot this video. Wall sits, definitely a good leg strength builder. Sit here and hold it 30 seconds to a minute. Find your random wall in the house. Enjoy the burn. This sucks <laughs> especially when you come out of it all right like that so wall sits add that to your routine now let's start getting into some floor work glute bridges listen dudes fellas this doesn't have anything to do with you out here trying to get a butt like a girl or anything like that what you want to do is strengthen your glute when you, your glutes are a very strong it's the second strongest muscle next to your quads Glutes must be strengthened in order to actually propulse and use your hips. So, because now we're working up the kinetic chain. We've worked the quads, we've worked the hamstrings. 
Now we're getting up a little higher. So now we're at that glute core connection. So what you want to do is hit those glute bridges, thrust the sky, toes up, heels down, and boom, sky, don't touch the ground, boom. Follow through, shoot the hip to the ceiling, as high as you can bridge up. Glute bridge right there. Very important. Like I told you all, the kinetic chain starts at the legs through the ground. So the next area that you're gonna train up needs to be your hips. And a lot of guys have bad hip rotation or no hip rotation and no hip strength and try to punch through the arms and thinking they're punching with some power and they're actually punching like mosquitoes, strengthen those glutes, boom, with these glute bridges. Next on the list is our core. Now, we all see a lot of boxers do a lot of sit-ups, crunches, different variations of ab exercises. However, they're only hardening their stomach so they can actually absorb blows. When it comes to actually discharging punch power, you have to work a plane that most people do not work in the gym. Everybody usually works a straight plane, a straight plane, a straight plane. What you have to do is work a rotating plane. You have to work side to side. So the first exercise we're gonna do, Russian twist. Up, now if you're a beginner, you can cross your feet for counterbalance and actually twist. The mistake a lot of people make is they, see I'm just jerking my arms, I'm not rotating at the core, I need to rotate and actually make sure that my core is turning. Once you get a bit more advanced, you can uncross those feet and these you can do a lot of. Boom, you could probably hit 50 to 100 straight, but it all depends on your strength level. If you do have any plates or anything around or any dumbbells, I don't have anything near, I was looking for it. I've got a big plate, but that's gonna, that's gonna ruin the actual full rotation, a plate this big. So a smaller plate or a dumbbell, you can put it in your hand and strengthen your rotation. You want to strengthen your rotation movement because that power is coming from the ground up through the legs and getting ready to discharge from your hip to your arms. Rotary, Russian twist. Another twisting maneuver that you can use, bicycle crunches, right here. So all you have to do, I'm twisting and I'm actually employing a bit of hip there. But you see my upper body is rotating I'm not concerned about my elbow touching my knee. All I want to do is twist. I don't care about it doing this. It's not the look of it, you all. It's the effectivity of it. So as long as you are twisting up at that torso, rotating side to side, you are doing the movement correctly. Rotational ab movements are those better to discharge that power. Bicycle crunches. Make sure you get them about 100 reps or whatever the case may be. Next on the list, push-ups. Everybody's too cool for push-ups nowadays, right? Because what, we've been doing push-ups since we were younger, it's the first exercise we were introduced to, and now with the emergence of us being able to go to the gym, we can sit on the bench and you know just lift a whole bunch of weight. However, push-ups involve far more core engagement than you do on the bench. When you lie on the bench, guess what you don't have the advantage of? What am I doing right now? A plank. So that means what? My core is involved. So calisthenics, core, core engagement, discharges through the arms, it all makes sense to do what? Push-ups, baby. Regular push-ups. Hit them, get strong, get used to them, and what principle did I talk about earlier when we were talking about the legs? Right, plyometrics, jump with them. So leave the ground. And what is that gonna do? Make your white fast twitch muscle fibers fire, which are great for what? Propulsion, power, and speed. Leave the ground. Good, right there. Do as many as you can. You're gonna feel a hell of a burn. If you're one of the advanced guys, you can clap, whatever it is you want to do. But push-ups and plyometric push-ups, 
that finishes the chain coming up through the body when it comes to the kinetic chain of power. Do not neglect your push-ups. Hit those jokers every day. Good hundred, good hundred dollar bill that'll get you nice and strong and ready to roll. Now here's some extra credit that you can do. Let's take it a step further. Isometric holds. So we've strengthened up the kinetic chain as far as building the muscles up, but we built them how? Separately. We trained our calves separate from our quads, our quads separate from our glutes, our glutes separate from our core, and our core separate from our arms. So now what we have to do is train the neurological system as far as being able to use all of these muscles together as one motor unit. You don't separate them when you're out there in combat. You use your body as one motor unit. So this is where isometric holds come into play. So an isometric hold would be you finding a wall or something inanimate that you cannot move. And what you're gonna do is apply force as hard as you can for five seconds on, five seconds off. So let's say I'm working on my right hand or my cross. What I'm gonna do is boom, sit in my boxing stance, put my hand on this wall, and I'm gonna drive from my feet all the way up through and push the wall as hard as I possibly can in a finished boxing stance as such. Release, two, three, four, five, press. Release, two, three, four, five, press. One, two, three, four, five. Three times. Five seconds on, five seconds off. I know, like you know, that there is no way humanly possible that I'm going to push this wall without the infinity stones. So, what I am feeling when I'm doing this isometric hold is every muscle fire up the side of my body. So I shouldn't just feel my arms press or I shouldn't just feel my core press. I should feel the entire kinetic chain that I just trained. So guess what? We got another side to work. So I'll stand southpaw, get my hand against the wall flat, a nice base, and I'm gonna be pushing from my feet through the hip and discharging. As such, <coughs> Release, two, three, four, five, press, one, two, three, four, five, release, one, two, three, four, five, press, one, two, three, four, five. And just like that, I'm teaching my body how to send power out of the ground through my legs, through my hips, discharging through the arm on an inanimate object. So you don't necessarily have to be in the house if, <laughs> if you don't want to get your walls dirty or whatever the case is, you don't want to mess up your mom's paint or you know some paint that you got on the wall or whatever, go outside. Go out. I'm sure you can't push the house over. If you can, you need to be tested. However, I'm sure you can't push the house over, so use these isometric holds. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, then you get in the hook position. Stand here and one, two, three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four, five. Press. One, two, and press hard. Three, four, five. Like I feel everything fine right now. I'm even starting to cramp a bit from the work that I've put in. And don't neglect hitting the other side. Like I, my back's going to be turned to you, but I believe in being even. So. I want power in both my hands, and hopefully you do too. So I'll turn backwards with it, stand southpaw, and turn that foot. Make sure you turn that foot. Video on that will be attached. So one, two, three, four, five. Release. Two, three, four, five. Press. One, two, three, four. Release. Those are isometric holds. Use them so you don't lose them. Use them so you don't lose the training of getting that strength from the body all the way up to the top.
Hey, listen, you all, I hope you enjoyed that video. That is boxing strength training that you guys can actually do at home. You don't have to be at a gym. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see. Like I said, I'm not only a boxing coach, I'm a capoeira formado, which is at the professor level. So I teach capoeira too. I teach martial art. So let me know what you want to see. Let me know how I can help you. I'm here for you. I'm an open book. I have nothing to hide from you guys as far as, you know, withdrawing secrets and tips or whatever. I believe in making sure that I strengthen the community and the community will strengthen me. So thank you guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Get strong, baby. <laughs>